What up, folks? What it do? Welcome to another episode of the best advice ever podcast. Yes, with your boy, the Bowtie Comedian, Mike Goodwin. And as I start each and every episode the same way. It's with the on the road segment. As I was preparing, this could, as I was preparing for the podcast, I was thinking, man, this this on the road segment could be the entire podcast. So we don't want that to happen. So I'm going to try my best to keep it condensed so I can keep it moving. Try my best. As I talked about last week, this was a pretty jam-packed week. This is one of those weeks where you're like, yo, I'm a professional comedian, right? Like, I know I'm a professional comedian, but then there, there are weeks that uh, punctuate, that that exemplify, that accentuate, that uh, make, makes it quite evident that this is what I do for a living. So as a recap, this week I was in Chicago on Thursday. I left Thursday morning. I was in Chicago. From Chicago, I went to Richmond, Texas, which is outside of Houston. From Houston, I went to Lake Charles, Louisiana. Then from Lake Charles, I actually left out of Lafayette. Lafayette? Lafayette? I was saying it incorrectly, and somebody was correcting me, but I, I want to say Lafayette, so I think it's Lafayette. Lafayette? Lafayette? Lafayette. I'm going to say it wrong. Lafayette, Louisiana. That's why I flew out. So let me make it make sense. So I flew out again. I flew out on Thursday from Columbia, South Carolina to to Chicago. Now, I have been den- I've been denying myself on entertainment opportunities on the road and I haven't even real I didn't even realize it. The reason I say that is because for the majority especially this year and probably the bulk of last year, I would fly to places and get a rental car. Very seldomly do I get Ubers because a lot of times were many of the times uh, because I like flying Delta, I fly into places that are not the actual city that I'm flying into because the, they don't have a hub for Delta or for various reasons. And I just drive over. So I'll fly into like like reason I flew into Pittsburgh, but I drove over to Indiana, Pennsylvania. That That's what I typically been doing. So you don't want to take an Uber to do those types of things. Well, this time. I was in places that the city was the same and that the radius of where I'll be operating was all probably within 30 miles of each other. Like everything was kind of situated. Rosemont, Chicago was kind of the outskirts. So that's where I was at. And I flew to play where I got in, in, in Chicago. I got a hotel at the spot. The hotel, the, the place that I had a hotel at had a shuttle. So I could shuttle to the actual hotel and back to the airport and then get an Uber to the to the comedy show. So that's what I did. I did that on Thursday. Got got on the shuttle, but I got on the wrong shuttle. I was on the phone with my fraternity brother. I was supposed to be going to the the Hampton Inn. I ended up going to the Hilton, which was about you know, a couple of minutes, five minutes around the corner from where I was supposed to be. But I'm on the phone, a little bit distracted, talking to my frat brother. I get to the Hilton. I'm like, man, this is a nice hotel. Now, <clears throat> why it? Why I probably got a little turned around or confused because I initially looked at the Hilton because I thought it had a, um, a sky walkway to the airport or, or, you know, one of those walk through places, but it was to the convention center and it wasn't to the airport. So that's what I was going to book initially until I realized that, oh, that was for the convention center, not the airport. So I pull up, we get out of the, well, I get out of the shuttle and 
I'm, I'm talking to my frat brother, so I didn't go right in and check in. But another fraternity brother pulls up and says something, you know, catch my attention. I'm like, I didn't have any paraphernalia or anything. And he made it, you know, comment, what up, Nuke? Something, something. I was like, hey, what's up? I was like, wow, man. And I was just explaining to my frat brother how um, it's vit, my life is, is I'm, you know, I, hey, I don't know. I'm famous, but like with a lowercase f, not with the capital F, right? <laughs> I get recognized from time to time. And it's, and it's different. And I'm, I'm kind of navigating that. So I'm like, yo, that's wild. This dude obviously knows me, or, you know, knows my affiliation, right? But then I go inside of the lobby and it's cappers everywhere. So I realized I walked into a, a province council meeting, right? Which is a big gathering of the cappers in that area. So they, man, there was a thousand cappers in the lobby. I go up to, to get in my hotel room and it's not the right hotel. So I get off the phone <laughs> and I get on the Uber to take a ride to my actual hotel. Now, in this ride, I feel like I'm a mark. I'm an easy target, and I don't even know it. I get in the ho I get in the Uber, and my Uber driver again, more, more, more entertainment. Now, this is my first Uber experience because I was in a shuttle initially, and guy was basically like, "Hey, man, hey, Mike." You know, he he warned me. I mean, it was very man. He was masterful because I, you know, I travel. I, I'm 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 not, I'm swaggy, you know, I'm not swagger, swagger, lo, swagger doshas, but I'm swaggy, you know, I, I got my blazer, I got on a button up, but I got some comfortable shoes and some khakis, you know, I, I look like I'm a professional. Then this guy says, hey, Mike, do you like to read? Oh my God, don't, what, don't I look like a scholar? Don't I look like an avid reader? My, I poke my little chest up. <laughs> do I like to read? Yes, I do like to read. Before I could say anything, my man had a book in my hand. He was like, oh, yeah, I wrote this book. <laughs> book called French Fry Leadership. And I'm holding this leadership book, and it's, it's substantial. It's a good book. It's, it's hardcover. The, it looks professional. I, I don't have my hands on a number of books, so it, it could it could be any book in my library. I could have this book, this type of book that uh, it, we had going on. And he's like, here's my book, you know, you check it out. If you don't, you know, you don't want to purchase, that's cool, you know, whatever. I'll sign it. I was like, man, how much your book? $25. So to the Uber driver up front, this man sold me a book. I had read this book. I have the book. I'm going to read the book. Uh, Fritz Riley, see, I, I found it to be quite interesting, right? So, and I, I, I like the hustle. I was like, yo, my man is about it. He is about it. And it made me think, hey, bro, you need to step your game up. If the Uber driver can sell you books and promote his business, what are you doing out here, right? So that was Uber driver number one. Uber driver number two is when I was actually going to the comedy club that night. Again, in the, con in, in, in the, no, why do these Ubers smell like marijuana? And when I smell it, like, I know that passengers smoke sometimes, but it feel like a lot of these drivers out here smoke. So I get in this guy's Uber, and he is, his English is not good at all. Find out he's a Russian guy. He's just butchering the language. He's telling me uh, whatever he's telling me. He, and so he asked, because he, he was taking me to the comedy clubs. He was like, basically, are, are you the comedian? Like, he, I mean, he had one of them strong Russian, uh, you, the comedian. I don't even know what he said, comedian. So he tells me a joke, which is, wow. So he basically like, hey, what, after five years of owning a car, and it took a long time because his English is not good at all. If you were to own a car basically for five years, what would be the thing that's on the inside of the car that looks relatively new? So I'm there like, I, the rear view mirror? And he basically was like, no, nah, the blinker. Because <laughs> you Americans. Now, when somebody says you Americans, 
I tense up. There's a lot of things that people say to me sometimes that cause me to tense up. I, I said I was at this uh, in Lake Charles. I was at the, at the um, I was doing a volunteer uh, appreciation dream team comedy night, and the guy was like, "Yeah, man, I like the black comedian." So it's about to say the black comedian. <laughs> it seems like a subculture, right? Ah, the black comedian. So that, that causes me to tense up. Like, oh, you're about to say something crazy. I've had that happen before. Uh, somebody, <laughs> I might have told this story before. When I was in, uh, this was doing this was back in the day in Fort Mill, they had this comedy room. It wasn't even a club. It was a, it was basically in a closet, but this guy and his wife come walk. Well, his wife more so than this, the guy, because the guy kind of stood back. The wife walked up and was, she told me how much she enjoyed the show. But her husband, he was, you know, a, few, a number of steps back. And she was like, even my husband was laughing. He normally doesn't laugh at the black man. So if somebody is calling black people the black man, I, I, I think he calls them some other stuff too. So that. That happens when the man say, you Americans don't know how to use the blank gun. And I said, oh, that's, that's kind of funny. So that was in, <laughs> that was in Chicago. But he told me a story about a black dude because, you know, again, the man was struggling to tell his story. But he, he, people want to talk to me, I guess, because I'm black about other black people. I, I don't know. Um, but the guy was, I don't, I don't even know the context of why we were in this conversation, but he basically was like, he picked this black dude up and the dude was was because he was talking about weed. So I guess my man had been smoking and he could smell it. But the guy gets in the car like a plate of spaghetti. And the guy's like, oh, no, no, you cannot eat in the car. And the guy's like, no, I ain't eating. I'm just holding it. <laughs> and he said, I guess he reeked of marijuana because he told me to tell some 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 weed stories. So that was Chicago. Right. So I leave Chicago. I don't remember the Uber that morning to the airport. <laughs> that yeah, so that I got back to the airport. No, I took the shuttle. I took the shuttle from the yeah, I took the shuttle from the hotel and away we go to Houston. Now, Houston I'm doing this date night comedy show at this church. I did it back in 2022 and I unloaded the clip. I'm talking about I record each set and I I go back over it. I unloaded the clip, right? And I'm nervous. I, 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 one of the things that has been a struggle, and it may be a struggle for other comedians, you go and you do an event and you do well. And then people are like, hey, man, we want to have you back in three weeks or six months or next year. And it's like, hey, man. I can't come back and say the same jokes because I've, I've seen comedians return to a place and do the same. I'm talking about verbatim. Now, I've never done that. I've never done that. I've always, always put jokes that I may lead with jokes and move those jokes to the end. Like, I never will return to a place and you like, you said the same exact words in the same order at a second place. Like I might do that. If you see me one night in this place and then I go to another place the next night, I probably would do that. Especially if I was on a tour, you know, I'm doing 20 minutes. I'm probably gonna do the 20 minutes. But if I you hook you buy, you know you you book me and then I come back a year from now, I'm not gonna say everything. I've seen it. And it's very disheartening to watch a comedian. I guess even they say sometimes preachers do that. Like preachers preach the same sermon. <laughs> On the second go round. So I was nervous about that show. I told y'all, here I am. I'm, a, I'm about 15 minutes in. I'm, I'm still on, on the road. This might just be an on the road segment. I, I don't know how to handle this. I don't know how to handle this, people. This is this is because I got a lot to talk about. All right, I'm, I'm speed it up. I'm gonna speed it up. Um, so I'm. But do one more little segment of on the road, then we're gonna we're gonna get out of here. We're gonna get out of here and, and and have the rest of the podcast be the rest of the podcast. So Houston, I'm nervous. I'm super nervous. Matter of fact, uh, the guy I coach, I have a, a, a comedian, uh, a guy that has hired me to coach him. So he 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 was his brother lives in Houston. They came to the show, but I'm already super nervous. I'm in my head 
about the show. I, I've, I've gotten this whole new set. I looked at all the jokes I did last time, and I was like, okay, I didn't do these jokes. So I had a whole um, arsenal. But it, it's similar to going to, uh, like, if we were, you know, again, y'all know me. I'm a big South Carolina fan. And it's basically like if Shane Beamer had to go into the Baton Rouge, you know, go to play LSU, and all his starters were suspended. And you got to play all the backups. So that's what I felt like with my my set that I was going into. I felt like I was going into like a backup set. Now, if I was Dawn Staley, my backup set was just as strong as my starting set, right? And that's the goal. You want to make sure all your material is as strong as anything, like everything you say is strong. But that just is not the case. There's, there's starters. There are a group of jokes that I, you know, and, I, and again, I'm not the comedian that... You see me two years from now, you'll be like, he did the same set. Like, yo, I'm going to do what you're not going to do. You know, I may do some, I may do, you know, nursery rhymes. I may do some some similar material, but I'm not going to do a set. But the other part of that, man, people don't remember often. Like, it's been two years. They had a good time when I came last time. They're probably going to have a good time when I come this time. But I'm, I'm in my head. And I had to do some self-talk and be like, bro, you're teaching folks how to be confident. You're working with speakers. You know, you, you want to exude this level of professionalism. Like, do it for yourself. Because, again, my body, the, how tense I was. It wasn't just like, oh, man, I'm about to go and do this work. It was like, I'm going to do this work, but I ain't got my starting quarterback. I don't have my starting offensive line. Then I get to the event, get to the venue, and they're like, yo, 70% of the audience has never seen you before. Now we're like, oh, I'm playing these starters. <laughs> and that's typically what happens. That that typically is what happens, but it still doesn't make you feel any better. So in Chicago, in, in uh not Chicago, in Houston, though, I got hit with the rude awakening. Uh <laughs> you know, I'm I'm in my late 40s. I'm about to be 50 in a couple of years, right? And sometimes in life, life reminds you of your age. Like, I'm not thinking about my age on a regular basis. But I get to the event in in, in uh, Houston, and, and the, the woman who was kind of my point of contact was basically like, oh, my goodness. Because I think when I went to this event before, I just did American Got Talent. So that was about two years ago. And so since then, if you, you know, you if you saw me then, it's, you're like, oh, man, this guy's on kind of like a meteoric rise like he's getting man this guy's all over the place he's working regular man he's a bit on to today's show like stuff is happening positive things got this big dad energy tour that's going down and so she was like you're such an inspiration like at 45 it just lets people know don't give up on your dreams so now i'm the don't give up on your dreams guy that's how they introduced me like the, the couple that was on stage is like hey this guy America's Got Talent, 45. He's a true example and epitome of not giving up on your dreams. I'm like, what? So I'm the don't give up on your dreams guy, which I didn't really say anything about it because they were doing this icebreaker and they were asking people about chickens. And I got into a conversation with them about chicks. So didn't say anything about that. Went out dinner, had a great dinner, which is uncommon when you're on the road because uh, things close and you don't get a great meal. So I had a great dinner that Friday night, but then I had to reserve the Uber for that morning. Reserve the Uber, this guy picked me up. He's playing like some hip hop, some J. Cole, some, some you know, some stuff that's, that's kind of mellow, but you know, it's not crazy. And I'm good, man. It's like 3.40 in the morning. It's, yeah, it's early. And I'm not, you know, I'm, I'm just going, it's, it's 40 minutes, it's 30 or 40 minutes from the airport. So I'm, I'm just, I just get in the Uber and I try to like not get murdered. That's just my whole goal <laughs> when I get in the Ubers, right? So now I'm on the thing. My man playing this music, it's kind of club. Uh, it, it feels a little like house music, a, a, a little, 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 you know, a little dance, techno-ish, but not all the way. So the guy was like, hey, man, can I ask you a question? And so then that's one of the times I tense up because I'm like, oh, this dude about to ask me some very introspective thing. 
And so he's like, oh, oh, can I ask you this question? He's a younger guy. This guy's probably, I estimate, in his 20s. He's probably 25, 24, 25. I said, sure, man. And he said, what do you know about this? So he started playing this, this song. And it sounds, I'm thinking it's like some obscure music he's playing. So I think about uh, in Louisiana, they have some music called Zydeco. Zydeco? Zydeco. It's like Calypso, but in Louisiana, if I'm not mistaken. So I'm thinking like, oh, maybe this is some Zydeco. I don't, and I don't know why that came to mind, but I I don't know. I'm like, this dude's asking me questions about this, this song and, and this beat's kind of playing. He's like, you, you should be familiar with this, right? So I'm kind of listening. It sounds kind of familiar, but I'm, I'm not thinking about this song. I'm thinking like, what's his question? Like, what's he? He's this is some broad reaching question. And come fire, it's Luther Vandross, right? It's Luther Vandross. Uh, come on, baby, and I can't. Do, 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 baby comes home. Some, you know, when my baby come home and whatever, like Luther Vandross song. And then dude goes into this like, yo, you would appreciate this because this is like my OG playlist. And most times when I'm playing it, the young people in the car be like, yo, what's that? You're playing. They want to hear some of the like common modern day songs. And I'm just like, yo, Houston is giving me the business on this age. Like, do I look extra old right now? And I've been doing this bit about how like strangers, especially especially when you're in fraternity, because you'll, you'll always meet young fraternity brothers. And they always are like, yo, what up, unk? What up, OG? And I'm like, I ain't no OG. I ain't your unk. We ain't, re- re- you ain't related. I ain't no OG, I'm a G. Well, that, they made me feel very OG-ish. My man had like a special OG pages, and so it was the Luther Vandross song. Then it went to like, Donna, the Donna, Donna <laughs> uh, in the in the in the Supremes, Donna Ross, in the, Diana Ross in the Supremes, like it jumped like three decades, like it was playing Luther Vandross, and then it went to like the sixties, and I'm like, yo, this is not what it is. And then as I was later, I thought about it, I was like, hey man, let me let me put you on some game, let me give you like a nineties, like I would give you like my nineties playlist because he was just kind of excited like man when i play this stuff people like oh i haven't heard that song in a long time and i'm like well, i'm always listening to old, old songs <laughs> i'm always listening to songs from my generation songs i grew up with so i'm not really listening to up-to-date music so i guess he was re- expecting a response from me like oh it's been a long time since i heard this song like nah no nah. i probably just heard that song the other day because i listened to these songs, man, but dude was like, yeah, my dad, you know, raised me on this. I'm like, man, just drive. All this jibber jabbering, right? So then that's 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 Friday on the Saturday. Now I'm like, I gotta leave to go to Lake Charles, Louisiana, right? Issue was I had my hotel in Lafayette, because again, I was flying out of Lafayette. So I flew into Lake Charles. Lake Charles was like an hour and twenty from Lafayette so I got there at about 11 30 and I was like can I just burn four to five hours in Lake Charles or would it make sense for me to drive an hour and some change to Lafayette at least get a nap shower you know refresh it up and then come back and as I looked at that time I looked around I was like yeah I'm going to Lafayette I'm going to Lafayette so I went to Lafayette and uh drove back in enough time but dinner was trash that night because i had at the hotel i had some alligator bites it looked like a good restaurant at the hotel but it was trash the trashiest of trash very disappointing i had a, like a spicy chicken sandwich trash they gave me a salad because I, I i switched out my french fries for a caesar salad with no dressing how they gave me no dressing so i'm using the the dipping sauce from the alligator bites as my salad, it was trash. It was the trashes of trash. Well, I think I've taken the majority of this podcast. I knew I was going to do the majority of this podcast on the road episode, but I'm also give you what this podcast is known for the best advice ever. I'm even in these waning moments. <laughs> so 
as as you also may know, I lost my father. So we're going through the house, went through the house Sunday. And we got to assess the value of things inside the house. You got to assess an inventory. Well, I found a journal from my youth. And this leads me to the best advice ever. I want to encourage you to practice humility or be humble. Be humble, right? Because I, when I got this, my guy, I'm, I'm, I'm 48, right? I got my hands on this book. I was embarrassed. And I'm thinking, if I, if I remember the years, I'm writing in this book, maybe 1984 to 89 was, was strong. So this is pre-high school. This is young Michael in middle school, which was a train wreck, a mess. I was not a fan of my mom, apparently, at this time. It, oh, my God. I was, oh, it was, it, I'm embarrassed to read this. But it also reminded me, and I, I was, I actually have been doing this on stage. And, I, and I'll talk about this in the first point of how, what, how, what are things you can do to be a little bit more, to practice humility? Um, but I, I'm, I, I was, I was reading this stuff and I was like, man, I was a little weirdo kid, man. Like, like now I'm polished and I'm, I'm mature and I've, strengthening my strengths and minimized my weaknesses and I'm positive, but bro, I was a whole mess out here, right? Uh, and one of the ways that you can practice humility is become more self-reflective. Like, like take a look at how you operate, how you make people feel. What are you doing out here in these streets, man? Like, <laughs> is your stuff not stink like I'm, i really had like because I've, I've had this false humility for a number of years because i think for me i spent a lot of times of people like attacking me and, and saying things about me and i was an easy target you know i'm the dark skinned kid I'm, I'm 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 real thin nappy little head big coat bottle glasses like it's easy to get at me my clothes were not the flyers i didn't have the best shoes so yeah, man, I, I was easy to get at. So then I had to like, I had to fortify myself in this false bravado, like this, you know, I don't care. You hurt my feelings. Sticks and stones may make my bones. You know, you, you getting it out. Like, yo, I can't let these people's words about me affect me. And they do affect me. And as a matter of fact, along with that journal, I found a yearbook for like elementary school. And I legit, like, I'm petty. I like, I knew I was petty. But I, my petty is bad. Like in this yearbook, I have like, I don't know what I had. I don't know if I had a razor. I cut the pictures of these, like it's like four girls that um, most recently at my, at my like class reunion I went to, like that's who I was with the majority of the time. Like, <laughs> but I cut these girls out of my yearbook. Like not fans <laughs> at all. I don't know what they were doing to me and saying to me. I didn't want to see their faces, bro. <laughs> I mark some people's faces. I mean, I, I, I'm petty, bro. So uh, self-reflection, this is something that I'm doing on stage and it's been it's been working a lot because I, I talk about my son a lot. And, you know, I've been calling my son to tell him how smelly he is and he's not that great at sports. Right. And I'm like, I was just recently asking myself, like, yo, what, 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 what's your deal? Like you would think. You're not proud of your son, or I got beef with my son. And you know, when I when I peeled the layers back a little bit, it was like, oh, I'm probably not as happy with myself. Like a lot of that, I see me in my son, like the early parts of the weirdo dude that was writing in the journal. I see in my son, I see some of those elements. So in in self-reflection, I, I I asked myself, like, so what is the stuff that about my son that causes me to feel the way that I used to be. And so I realized that, oh man, I, you know, I wasn't this polished young kid and I was doing dumb stuff and getting in trouble. And one of the things I used to do when I, I used to steal, I used to steal money out of people's purses. I, I, did, I would steal because I wanted things. And I, 
we didn't have money. We didn't have, and that's one of the worst things you could do is steal from people who don't have money. Like in my house now, you can find some money. Like there's a dollar laying somewhere. There's some coins in a jar. Like that wasn't the case at our house. Like there was no loose money, especially when we were able to start like going to buy candy and, and stuff. Like we got all the money. Like we would wait for somebody to come to the house and sit in the couch so that we could go on the couch and get that change that fell out their pocket. Like that, we was not like, if I took five dollars on my mom purse, she knew five dollars was going. That was probably part of the problems that I was writing in that journal about. It was about money and the issues I I was having with, I probably was asking my mom for money. She didn't have money. Cause I was like, I was a little bit mad at my dad if I looked, read some of that stuff, but I was very mad at my mom. And it had a lot to do with how cheap she was. <laughs> but through all this self-reflection has allowed me to, to do some things on stage that is more, I, it, I wouldn't even say self-deprecated, but it, it's more self-revealing of who I am. Cause now I'm sharp, I'm educated, I'm successful, things are going well, but what about the guy that the guy I was before I became this, right? And that that connects you and that resonates with the audience. And that, that allows you to be more humble. So, so have some self-reflection, practice self-reflection. The next thing is to admit mistakes. Admit mistakes, like I did that wrong. I, I falsely accused, I'm sorry. I, I, I went the wrong way. I said the wrong thing. I, I thought the wrong thought, like admit Mistakes, which I was not very great at doing that because I always want to be right. I don't know if y'all have those people in your life that you have very difficult times having conversations with them because they want to be right all the time. I was I was that guy wanting to be right. So admit mistakes. The other thing is celebrate other successes, right? Applaud people's success. Don't just read it and like it. Like send them a message. Write them a thank you note. Like, like really... Uh, genuinely be happy for other people. And when they are succeeding and they got a promotion or they got this big opportunity, like, be like, don't downplay it. Like, I, I'm a friend of mine just recently um, got a new job and he's going to be moving from the city, which is sad. And he was, she was, you know, was telling me this. And I said, man, congratulations, man, you deserve it. Like, I, I'm gonna hate to see you leave, but it just gives me somewhere else to visit. Like it gives me a person in another city. Hopefully it's a dope city that I may go to regularly or it's a city I haven't and I'll have a reason to go, but I, I want to celebrate the successes of my friends and, and even others, others, people that I know from afar. Like, Hey bro, I appreciate what you're doing. Seek feedback. That's another way we can practice humility. Uh, I heard it once said the feedback is the breakfast for champions, right? So seek feedback. And last but not least is, is serve others. Serve others and, and volunteer. Um, take time out of your day to empower folks that can't do anything for you. I think that that um, is a great measure of a person. It's, are they doing things for people that could do nothing for them? And so as Kendrick Lamar would say, be humble, be humble. That is the advice of the day, the best advice ever. Well, it's time to wrap this puppy up again. I knew this was going to be a long on the road segment and I even get through all the things, but I, I want to talk about, I'm going to do some upcoming. I'm going to do this. Mike watches movies. Cause I was just thinking like, when I'm on the road working, sometimes I think the benefit is just doing the show and that's not the benefit. Like what if the show goes wrong? So I need to do some other things that I enjoy. And I enjoy movies. I haven't been going to movies. So what I'm gonna start doing is watching some movies, um, going to movies, being more intentional about movies, even movies I may have seen a long time ago, but haven't seen in a while. And that's what I just recently did. I watched a movie that I watched maybe once. And, um, I'm gonna I'm I'm review the movie. Uh, but what you're not gonna do before I leave is give y'all some thoughts. I just, comedy shows that people are always trying to come up with names. They just can't say it's a comedy show. They gotta have some 
they have some funny names. I just saw one funny. Now, I just saw an interesting name. I've never seen this name because most of the names, people just adopt them and use them. You know, it's, it's, if you're doing uh, like uh, like fraternities or do like um, cigars and sundresses, like so that may have been the Q's in Charlotte may have started that or the Cabos in Charlotte. But then you look, there's a cigars and sundresses in Houston and then one in Dallas. So people kind of adopt the titles of things that they think are successful. The same thing happens true for comedy shows, but I just saw one I'd never seen before. It's called Grapes and Giggles. Now, the concept <laughs> of jazz and comedy is one that's pretty familiar. Wine and comedy is for me. Matter of fact, I used to do this show in, in, in Asheville at a wine bar, at a, at a wine shop. And we didn't, I don't think we had a particular name for it. Uh, but Grapes and Giggles was the name of this comedy show. And the problem I have, I hate giggles. Shout out to this uh, show I used to do called Gospel Giggles back in the day. I don't like the word giggles in a title. I don't like if people like, oh man, come out to this comedy show and get your giggle on. No, giggles is not enough. I'm, you're going to laugh. You're going to go fall. You're going to ha ha ha. I ain't no giggling. Giggling is for little schoolgirls, I guess. <laughs> So what you're not going to do is see Mike Goodwin on a show entitled Giggles and watch next month. I'll be on some gospel giggle show because the check is right. Your boy going to be there. Well, thank you all so much for tuning in, man. I I, I don't want to apologize. Cause I try to keep it within 30 minutes. Try to keep it through like a, a, a session of a Stairmaster. That's what I try to do. I try to do 30 minutes on the stair mat. So that's the ideal time length for my podcast. So somebody can just knock their cardio out, right? But I went a little long, but I hope y'all enjoyed it. Please, please let folks know about this podcast. Subscribe, like, share. Um, if you have any questions, just, just email me at info at comedianmikegoodwin.com. Thank y'all for checking in and I'll see you next week. Same bat channel, same bat, bat place, same bat time. You could have been anywhere in the world. But you're here with me and I appreciate it. I'll see you next time. Peace.